Let's talk today about cloning. One of the problems that I see some amateurs make when cloning pieces out of an image is that you get a lot of duplication of the clones and some repetitive patterning that's very obvious to someone who's looked at cloning a lot and can pick it out. So we want to make sure that we reduce or eliminate the likelihood that you'll have perceptible patterning in your image when you're cloning. So I'm going to pretend for a minute that I need to take out this pine tree out of the foreground in my image. Now personally it doesn't bother me, but I'm just using this for example. First what I want to make sure I do is that I have two copies of my original image. The original plus the background copy. Next I'm going to go to my clone tool. And then I want to make sure that my brush has a hardness around zero. The hardness or softness of your brush will allow you to feather in the edges and make it look more realistic. Then, once I'm done, I click my background copy, and then I can change the width of my brush up or down by using the bracket keys on my keyboard, or by going up to my actual brush and changing the size up or down. Next, I want to click my Alt key next to an area that I'd like to use in my clone. Then, I can go through here and clone the area. I want to make sure that I don't clone too much of the same thing twice. So for example, if I select Alt here, and then I'm cloning my entire image, if I don't select different areas, all of a sudden, I start to get similar patterning everywhere. And this can be problematic. For example, I see patterning here that looks the same as this, that looks the same as this. I have this pattern here, here, and here, and this pattern here, here, and here. That's very obvious to me that that has been cloned. We want to make sure we avoid that. So to do so, make sure you sample smaller samples and pull from different areas and clone over obvious duplicated areas to reduce the likelihood that your image is going to look like it's full of clones in the foreground. In some cases, you may need to pull even from different images of yours and clone in areas if you have similar types of rocks in order to prevent the look that this has been cloned. Take a close look at your image and see if you notice patterns. I still notice this here, here, and here as a clear pattern in which I've cloned. I might want to grab a different part of rock that I haven't seen yet and clone over it to reduce the likelihood that someone will notice that this area has been cloned. Changing even a little bit of the texture can change how your image is perceived and whether or not it looks as though large portions of it have been cloned. I can continue on here. I still have some duplication here and here, but you get the idea. And even changing little pieces of it can change the outcome of how your rock will look. Another technique is you can change the contrast or dodge or burn different areas in order to create different levels of depth. So for example, if I want to burn my shadows, perhaps I use an exposure of about 3%. And then I can go back to my background copy, burn the shadow, and create a different look yet for this particular rock. I use a small percentage, like 3%, so that you have more control. You can always go back and forth over the images a few times to get the depth that you need. But it's often hard to restore it back if you've done too much, unless you erase or start over. Likewise, I could dodge certain areas to bring out some highlights. And there's a variety of ways you can do this. You don't have to necessarily just use the dodge tool. You can use overlays, paint brushes, and so forth to create similar effects. But this will help give your rock some more texture. There are still a few areas here that I think need a little bit more fine tuning with the cloning. I've been seeing a lot of circular patterns in here that look similar throughout my image. So I want to make sure that I've cloned those out as best I can. Okay, I think we're completed with this particular image. Now it's time to collapse the layer, save it as a JPEG, and you're done.